I had my, my say about the Labor bullying claims at the top of the program and I showed you how uncannily these issues of the Parliament House culture came up in what turned out to be my last interview with Kimberly Kitching last month. Everyone who works here has a responsibility to ensure that our workplace is a good workplace and it's a safe workplace and a respectful workplace. Well said by the late Kimberly Kitching there. Her funeral was held in Melbourne on Monday. Let's go now to her close friend, former Labor frontbencher Michael Danby in Melbourne. Michael, how can Anthony Albanese effectively dismiss holding an inquiry into Kimberley's treatment simply on the basis that it might distract during an election campaign? Well, surely people uh, during an election campaign judge you on consistency of treatments of uh, issues of uh, bullying or harassment. And uh, sincerity is, uh, is everything in, uh, in politics. I, I think uh, Albo's been misinformed. Uh, there was a bullying complaint. I mean, she talked to half of Parliament House uh, uh, about how she was uh, being treated, and not just her, her staff were um, hassled as well. And um, her, her, it was not simply a matter of she had a whinge about not being on the tactics committee. That's to trivialise and disrespect her. You, you wouldn't give someone... Uh, well, the Labor Party wouldn't invent a human rights award just to to uh, give to someone who was whinging about not being on the tactics committee. It was more profound than that. It was exacerbated by what was happening here in Victoria with um, the right faction or the small group of the right faction uh, voting with the Socialist left to not decide on Senate pre-selections. And the Lilliputian uh, group, uh, uh, you know, not letting her uh, establish herself as the, the senator from Victoria again, as she should have been. But I, I don't get it, um, Chris. Um, uh, people rightly uh, call for inquiries into the mistreatment of other women. And um, how can we not uh, have an objective ex examination of uh, the mistreatment of one of our own? Chris, there are texts, there are documents, there are witnesses. Um, um, there was a tw tweet from a very famous young Chinese-Australian woman in, in April, Vicky Zhu, who said, um, Kimberly spoke to me about her treatment uh, and bullying in April 2021. Um, why are we excluding her view and all of the other evidence that it, there is... Uh, before well, we've even looked at the facts. Th this is a very important point, M Michael, because I showed a, a statement from Anthony Albanese in the House last year when these issues were being raised very dramatically and targeting especially the government. But Anthony Albanese was saying, first and foremost, he was demanding an inquiry. And, it was, and secondly, he was saying you needed to have a culture where women felt they were able to lodge complaints. Yet today... He's suggesting there was no formal complaint, not a formal complaint. We know there was a detailed letter written. We know also that Kimberly Kitching went to Richard Miles, the deputy leader, to, ha to discuss these issues. Now, there's only two people in that meeting and he now tries to dismiss, his, dismiss it as not being about bullying. There's the other evidence that you mentioned. There is enough there to have an inquiry to see if there was actually a complaint of bullying or behaviour that wasn't up to standard. It's, it's really quite pathetic to, to, to hide behind this, this line about no formal complaint. What Did it have to be filled out in the right form in triplicate? Well, there, there were a whole series of complaints about her uh, um, ostracisation and um, harassment of, uh, in the period for all, all through last year. To many people, um, uh, Samantha Maiden um, and, and other people have talked about it already, even on the, uh, the ABC. Uh, but, you know, how, how can we not examine this after everything uh, that's uh, that's happened. It, to, you have to be consistent. You can't just say uh, if it disadvantages the conservatives, we should look at these kind of things, and then when it happens to one of our own, fail to examine it. We know that in November, uh, she made a formal complaint to the workplace uh, a human services uh, outfit in Canberra. That should have been passed on to the Labor leadership too. 
But the, the most egregious thing in all of this too is because of her differences with Penny Wong, she wasn't treated in a collegial or even a professional, in my view, way. Yeah, the differences yeah, that, over China. And that really is, you know, motivates the Australian people. Kimber was on the right side of history. These people weren't, and they shouldn't be able to get away with just saying it never happened. It was only a whinge about the tactics committee. Uh, it, it, it ain't so, and I, I, I want to see evidence of this apology because none of her friends or family knew about it uh, when it happened. And the average Australian woman, if they know that the, the deputy leader of the Labor Party in the... Sorry, the leader of the Labor Party in the Senate... Um, you know, taunted someone with being childless. I mean, Bill Heffernan was nearly run out of town and quite rightly for calling Julia Gillard barren. I'm just in favour of consistency. Yeah, no, um, I mean, you're so right. This, Chris, this is the and, point and, you know, when it I comes just... to the evidence. That state, there, there, there's an admission of one of the central claims and, and, and an apology that no one knows, of course, because the person on the other end of that apology is no longer with us. So, so, so this is the point, and I, I want to get to what Kimberly Kitching told you then, Michael, because you would have spoken to her often about these things, and it comes to how you characterise them. We know that she was being ostracised. We know that there were differences over some, some Labor Party and policy issues. But did the way she uh, relayed these concerns and her treatment to you amount, in your view, to bullying? They crossed the line between really tough and ongoing political criticism, which I could understand um, Wong and Gallagher and uh, their group having because uh, they're weaker on foreign policy and particularly on China than, than Kimberley was. Um, it, it, it crossed the line and we never heard about this apology. Um, Kimber told us um, when the original taunt happened that she described it as creepy, really creepy. Um, she didn't think that this was something that should be done between uh, intelligent uh, 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 women. And, um, but she thought she'd sort of fudge her way through, that, you know, she was a big, strong girl and that she'd be able to face down eventually uh, uh, Penny Wong. Um, and, and she didn't complain um, as loudly as she should have, nor did her friends complain as loudly as they should have, either about her mistreatment in Canberra or about the self-interested process of elongation of the pre-selections in, Vic in Victoria. Um, she was representative, the leader of about 40, 45% of the Labor Party. She could have seized um, the Senate position in normal times. Um, and um, only because of this self-interested hanging of the sword over her head for a year was um, she not able to, uh, to do that. Just Why very did briefly, that happen? Just Why very... wasn't the complaint passed on? Yeah, just very briefly then, why do you believe Anthony Albanese won't hold such an inquiry? Well, I mean, he said it, that it contradicts uh, uh, Labor's uh, wishes to only, to only be involved in election matters. But sincerity and consistency are election matters too. And, uh, you know, I believe, um, you know, our brave friend who's uh, lost for Australia, unfortunately, um, has deserved... Uh, you know, her issues being looked into. And um, you can't turn your blind eye to the telescope and say, oh, well, I haven't seen any of the evidence and there was no formal th complaint of bullying. Um, uh, and therefore, it, uh, it didn't happen. It was just a whinge about the tactics committee. It ain't so, uh, Chris, and the truth will come out. Thanks for joining us again, Michael. And again, sympathies to you and your comrades. Thank you. Well, particularly to her husband, Andrew, and to her dear parents. They're such lovely people, and they don't deserve to bury their daughter. Thanks again, Michael Danby. Well said then. Ah, consistency in standards and finding out the truth. Always good things to back.